Hmm. What's everybody humming about? Shh. We're looking at the shower. Oh. Why? Shh. Because, um, because, uh, because Holly is. Right. Yeah. Oh. Why are you looking at the shower, Holly? Shh. What's the matter? Shh. You're trying to think. Oh. No. Oh, wait a minute. I'm finished. It's okay. Oh. oh. <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah. Uh, finished what? Why were you looking at the shower? Oh, because I have to draw one for a story I'm doing. Oh. oh. A story about a shower? Mm-hmm. Well, sort of. It's a story about how the first shower came to be, how it was thought up. Mm. It's even called the first shower. Would you like to hear it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, great, yeah. yeah. yeah well, okay, please. it's just in the other room. I'll, I'll go get it. Okay. Yeah. Right, here it is. Okay, I... What are you doing in there? It's more comfortable. Yeah, it'll get us in the right mood for your story. <laughs> Okay, now I'll just find the page. Yes, here it is. Ready, here we go. The first shower. Once upon a time, in a faraway kingdom, there lived a young king. Most people thought he had a very easy life, with lots of servants and all the treats he could eat. But the truth is that he had a lot of hard work to do. He had to walk around wearing a heavy crown and learn which dragons were friendly and which weren't and shake hands with hundreds of people every day. But the worst thing of all, thought the king, was having to take a bath every morning. He hated taking baths. Not because he didn't like to be clean, but because the bathtubs in those days were so uncomfortable he had to get all scrunched up to squeeze in, and his long arms and long legs would dangle way over the side. Half of him was always hot, and half of him was always cold. That's enough, he cried one day. I don't want to do this anymore. Well, the next day he called his chief assistant, the prime minister. Yes, sir, your majesty, said the prime minister. What do you want me to do? Order you a new suit of armor? Or polish your crown? Build a new palace? Uh-uh, said the king. Those can wait. There's something much more important. I know. Make a new room? No, no. Uh, wait, I know. Um, start a new baseball team. Neither. Iggy, don't you have a guess? What? Uh, oh, I mean, yes. Uh, no. What? Iggy, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Keep, uh, keep telling your story, Holly. It was great. Really interesting. So what did the king want, Holly? Well, said the king, I want you to find a way that I can get clean without having to take a bath. <laughs> yes, your majesty, giggled the prime minister. He thought that was the silliest thing he had ever heard. He was still laughing as he bowed and walked away. One more thing, said the king. If you can't figure out another way in seven days, I'm going to put you in the dungeon. That's what they used to do in those days, but they don't do that anymore. Hmm. Huh. What's a dungeon? It's a deep, dark place at the very bottom of the castle. Whoa. <laughs> That sounds scary. It is. Well, the Prime Minister called a meeting of all the other ministers, and he told them that if they didn't help him think of something, he would put them in the dungeon. And pretty soon, everyone in the whole kingdom was busily working on how to get the king clean without having to take a bath. The next day, the Prime Minister hurried in to see the king. I've got it, he cried. Come with me, your majesty. He took the king outside and told him to stand in a low place near the castle and to have his soap ready. This is what we're going to do, he said. 
We're going to change the direction of the river so that it will flow by the palace and wash you as it flows by. Ready, Your Majesty? The king said he was ready, so the prime minister waved the signal to start. A moment later, they heard the sound of rushing water that didn't sound like a river any longer. It sounded like Niagara Falls. Uh-oh, said the prime minister. Maybe there's too much water coming this way. And sure enough, in another second, a huge wave of water came swooshing down on them. The king and the prime minister just managed to scamper up to the top of a tall tree before the water rushed under them. You'd better think of something else, said the king. You've only got six days left. Mm -hmm, said the prime minister. He called all his other ministers together again and they sat up all night, thinking as hard as they could. And finally, one of them had an idea. The moat. What's a moat? I, uh, I think it's a kind of a cucumber. Isn't it, Iggy? What? Oh, um, uh, yes. Uh, right, Jacob. But that's weird. Why should he stand next to a cucumber? He didn't. A moat is a circle of water around the castle. Like a little pond. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I knew that. The next morning, the Prime Minister asked the King to come out and stand by the moat. So the King got his soap and stood at the edge of the moat. And then, the Prime Minister pushed him in. The trouble was that the moat, which wasn't very deep, was where the kitchen cook always emptied the garbage. And the King found himself standing in a pile of potato peels, bread crusts, Carrot tops and old mush. Ugh, yuck. Ugh. The cook shouldn't put the garbage in there. No, he shouldn't have, but they didn't know any better in those days. Hmm. Well, the king wasn't very happy. And neither was the prime minister, because now he had only five days to find a way before he was put in the dungeon. He thought and he thought, and the next day he came back with another idea. This is what we're going to do, he told the king. It's supposed to rain today, so if you stand outside the castle, the rain will wash you clean. All right, said the king, but this better work. So he took his soap and went outside. Pretty soon it began to rain just as it was supposed to. At first, everything went just fine. The king washed himself happily and got off most of the garbage, but then, Something terrible happened. The rain turned into a thunderstorm. Crash came the lightning all around the king. The wind threw branches in his face. The ground turned into a huge puddle. By the time he managed to get back to the castle, he felt very, very upset. The poor king. Yeah, boy, I got caught in a thunderstorm once. I got soaked. Me too. <laughs> uh, no, no, I'll wait until the story's over. And then... <laughs> Three more days passed. No one could think of another way to get the king clean. On the sixth day, the king was feeling sorry he had said he would put everyone in the dungeon. But a king always has to do what he says he will. So if someone didn't find a way, he'd have to do it. Just at that moment, the 10th assistant kitchen maid leaned out the window to drain a pot of cooked cabbage. She was a smart girl, so instead of just dumping it out, she had made a draining bowl full of holes. And she plopped the whole pot, water, cabbage and all, into the bowl. Down it poured in a dozen straight streams, right onto the head of the king. Ew! he cried. Stop that! So, uh, <coughs> I'm completely soaked. The little kitchen maid was really scared. So were the other kitchen help and even the cook. The king would be so mad he might throw them all in the dungeon too. After all, one of them had dared to pour old cabbage juice on the royal head. Oh, it was a mistake, sire, pleaded the head kitchen maid. She didn't know we were there, whimpered another. 
Well, well, that's right. Everyone makes mistakes. Uh -huh. I know, I know, said the king. I just want to know something. How did she make the cabbage juice pour out in a dozen straight streams? The maid showed him the draining bowl she had made. That's it, the king shouted. Can you fix up one of these things so I could stand under it and get washed? Oh, easy as pie, said the maid. And in no time at all, she had figured out the world's first shower. The king stood under it and got washed. He was very, very happy. At last, he had found a way to get washed without taking a bath. They even thought of a way to heat the water with the help of the friendly local dragon. Afterwards, when the king got dressed, he went back to see the kitchen maid. You're very smart, he said. Would you... Uh, would you like to be my queen? Oh, no thank you, said the maid. I already have three boyfriends. Oh. Well, in that case, would you like to be my prime minister? Oh, I would, said the maid. And so she was. <laughs> oh, that was really good. I like that. Yeah. I like the part where the cabbage juice gets poured on the king's head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, is that the end of the story? The end? The end. Well, well that's what I've been waiting for. <laughs> it's a story about showers, right? Mm -hmm. So, it's... Showers for everybody! Showers for everybody! <laughs> showers for everybody! Sh sh uh, Iggy? Uh, wait a second. Uh, how'd you get dry so fast? Well, we didn't even get wet. Yeah. The shower's broken, Iggy, didn't you know? Broken? B broken? The shower's broken? But, but I... Uh, right. Yeah, I knew that. Um, uh... I, I was just joking. But, ha -ha. Iggy, uh, if you ha -ha. really want a shower, ha -ha. you can yeah. always use the kitchen maid's invention. Oh, oh good oh, idea. Here's a colander and a pot of water. Are you ready? <laughs> Shall I pour? Wait, no, wait, 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 I got you there. <laughs> it's empty, Iggy. I was just using them as models for oh. my drawing. It's okay. <laughs> she was just kidding. But you didn't like the story.